truth. You can't handle the truth. Thanks for tuning in. It's Brother Rob Wilson. Just want to give you an example of what happens when you go woke and you fast from the Word of God and the sufficiency of the gospel. A woke Chicago church for Lent is fasting from whiteness. And apparently they've been fasting from the gospel. Check it out. Check it out. This is this is troubling. This is a church that does not value the gospel or the word of God or the supremacy and the finished work of reconciliation accomplished by Christ. I'm going to share a scripture with you. Like, subscribe, and share if you care. Whiteness, of course, I cannot change the color of my skin or the way that that allows me to move through the world, but I can change what I listen to, whose voice I prioritize. And so that is kind of... Bingo. <laughs> Bingo. I can change whose voice I prioritize. When you and we prioritize the word of God, thus saith the Lord, the kingdom of God, when we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these things will be added to us and we could have reconciliation. Amen. Kind of the plan for our worship services through Lent, that we would fast for a time from prioritizing white voices. You're supposed to prioritize, you're supposed to fast from prioritizing human voices in the church of God. You're supposed to prioritize the word of God in the church of God and the word of the gospel and the ministry of reconciliation. Wow. Woke churches may not be churches. And that we would use the music and poetry of black, indigenous, and people of color and see what the spirit might do among us. What spirit? What spirit are you seeking? The spirit of the world? The spirit of denying the finished work of the cross of Jesus Christ? The spirit of worldliness because this is worldliness we know that a lot of the music that we will want to use during this time of Lent will be spirituals and we know that those are public domain that means they're free to use we don't pay to use those a lot of the white European music that we use, we do. This ain't it. <laughs> this ain't it. Christ did not die for us to live like this, to classify, identify, and stigmatize people in all these different identity groups. This is so heart wrenching, especially before. Good Friday, before Easter Sunday. You're really focusing on how we're all so different. You're really focusing on the world and not on the kingdom of God. Seek ye first kingdom of God. Pay for it through licensing. And that licensing. What was paid for through the blood of Jesus? That mankind male, female, young, old, of every race, of every tribe, of every tongue, of every kindred, from the uttermost to the guttermost, from the least of these to the greatest, is reconciled to God through Jesus Christ. Mm. The, 
blood of Jesus paid for reconciliation between an unholy people, totally unlike God, to a holy God. And yet we say, people say, they say the blood was insufficient. They sure do, Siri. It ensures that artists are paid for their work. The ways that black artists have been undercompensated or uncompensated is unjust. And so... What about the king? What about the father? What about the compensation that we're supposed to, that he's supposed to get in us? That we're supposed to see things from a kingdom perspective rather than everything from a worldly perspective. We're supposed to glorify God in our unity. We're supposed to glorify God in being unlike the world, not being just like the world. We will be paying royalties during this Lent on our spirituals, on public domain works that we use. And the Chicago Music School, the completely free music school for the young people of Chicago, they have agreed to receive those royalties from us. We are looking forward to finding out what God might do among us during this Lent. Doesn't really sound like you are you're looking forward to what God might do among you, among this Lent. But you're not looking backwards to what God did and accomplished on the cross. You're not. That's what's wrong. That, that is what's so wrong with this. You aren't remembering what Christ did already. Let's look at the scripture. This is my favorite scripture, which speaks of what Christ accomplished. This is my, I mean, I have some go-to verses I just love and adore, but this is the probably the biggest one. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11. Therefore, remember that at one time, you Gentiles in the flesh, called the uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision. Okay, we're all Gentiles. If you're not a Jew, you're a Gentile. Okay, this applies to us. This still preaches to us today. Remember that you were at that time separated from Christ, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. We were all like that at one time. But now in Christ Jesus, look, 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 but now you don't have a but now. How can this church celebrate Lent and look forward to what God has done when it has when it has forsaken or look forward to what God will do when it has forsaken what God has done? This is aggravating. <laughs> I can get that that verse in uh, Revelations 2 where it talks of Jesus being uh, with eyes of flaming fire and feet of burnished bronze. This is an offense to the gospel. This is offense to the cross. He says at one time you have no hope and without God in the world, but now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. I think it's like nearness to Christ that helps us have nearness to one another because we realize we all were as far off as every other person. And every, every oppression, every injustice, every wrongdoing in the world, in God's eyes, boils down to sin. But it says you were, you were brought near by the blood of Christ, for he himself is our peace, our peace with God, who has made us both one and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility. There was a dividing wall of hostility between every single living being throughout history between God and man and in Christ it was broken down and if you're telling me that it was broken down between a sinful man or woman or child and a holy God it should be broken down between man and man 
This reminds me of the parable of the unmerciful servant. And it says here, by abolishing, for he himself is our peace, who has made us both one, has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility by abolishing the law of commandments expressed in ordinances that he might create in himself one new man. And I know I'm probably cutting my mic out. I'm getting louder. One new man. One new mankind. Mm. One new man in place of the two. But now we don't have two. We have 22. We have 32. We have all these different cliques and sets and ideologies. One new man in place of the two. So making peace and might reconcile us both to God in one body through the cross, thereby killing the hostility. If you recognize the work of the cross done and accomplished for you and look at your fellow man and do not recognize that that same blood and that same sacrifice and that same atonement that you rely upon also has reconciled that person to God and should reconcile them to you. If the kingdom comes first, killing the hostility, you at peace with God but at war with your brother or sister because of their economic status or their educational status or their racial status come on I don't know what you believe I don't know if you believe this and he came and he preached peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near for through him we both we all have access in one spirit to the father so then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets with Christ Jesus himself mm, being the cornerstone in whom the whole structure being joined and held together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you also are being built together into a dwelling place for God by his spirit. How does that work? How does that work when you say the blood of Christ is insufficient? I'm going to bring up another scripture. Okay, this is another one of my favorites and then I'm going to be through. This should this should be moving people especially at this time of year. Uh, this power of the cross, this power of the sacrifice of Jesus, this power of reconciliation has the power to heal racial, uh, the racial injustice we have in this world. It has the, the damage of relationship that was done between us in the past, in history, gone by. Even in the, even in the present, there's power. It, it heals families. It reconciles mothers and, and fathers to their children. It reconciles husbands and wives to one another. This cross, the cross, the blood has the power of reconciliation. 2 Corinthians 5.16 And this is our problem. This is our problem. This is what we do. 2 Corinthians 5.16 Paul's writing to, to the Corinthians From now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh. That's, that's what we do as followers of Jesus Christ. That's what mature believers do. They don't regard folks according to their flesh, according to their sex, according to their age, according to their race. It says, even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard him thus no longer. This is powerful. This is reconciliatory. And folks want to tell me they want to, they want to re don't regard me according to my flesh. You're not practicing kingdom. You're practicing world. And in the church, it doesn't surprise me in the world. It surprises me in the church of the living God. Now, 17, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. What was talking about in the, in the book of Ephesians chapter 2, a new humanity. He is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Or some verses say, all things have become new. And in verse 18, all this is from God, 
who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. And the church of God, the church of a living, the living God, does not comprehend the work of the cross in reconciling man to God and man to man. They're saying the blood is insufficient. They're saying the work of Christ was insufficient. They're saying the doctrines of not regarding people according to their flesh is to be thrown out the window. It says, therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. It's a, to implore, to plead, to beg. Please be reconciled to God. Look at what God has done. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Please accept him. Please investigate him. Please check history. Check the historians that document his life. Check the witnesses that witness to his resurrection after he laid down his life and his blood was shed to be the atoning sacrifice for your sins, for my sins, for the sins of the world. Hmm. But we who know this, we who have received this good news, the good news of the gospel of the kingdom, are telling people, you need more than the blood of Jesus. You need more works. You need to sacrifice rams and goats and fast from something that does not exist. You cannot define me. You cannot classify, identify, and stigmatize me in any way, shape, or form in opposition to who God says I am. And don't let nobody do that to you either, brother or sister. You are a child of God. You are a royal priesthood, a holy nation of people belonging to God. That you might declare the praises who released you from darkness and called you into his glorious light. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God for our sake. He made him to be sin who knew no sin so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Whoosh. I'm telling you, I'm done. <laughs> I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to let y'all go but I can't comprehend it I can't comprehend the things that the so called so called church of God is doing people who call themselves the church of God I really believe that in this time and in this hour God is separating the wheat from the chafe and the sheep from the goats and to disregard the gospel in Lent to disregard the sufficiency of the gospel during a season of Lent yeah I'm a little fired up and it should fire everyone up but if you if you have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ if you have received him into your life by faith and become a child of God don't you know what he wants don't you know what he wants the Bible says to pursue peace with all men and holiness without which no one will see God. And that holiness is to be set apart from the world. To not be a carbon copy of the culture of the world. But to create a kingdom culture that defies everything and every expectation of the world. Hmm. But we've got churches that look just like the world they're divided into cliques and sets and everything else this is brother rob wilson shocking and i pray and hope that you are one of the people 
who gets the full revelation and knowledge and understanding of the finished work of Jesus Christ that can restore you to who God created you to be. All the words of God, all the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. He has a new identity for you, not classified and identified and stigmatized based upon where you live or where you came from or what your mama and daddy did, but according to Christ. He was despised and rejected, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, Isaiah 53. He went to his own and his own received him not. But to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become a child of God, a child born not of natural descent or of a human decision or of a husband's will, but a child born of God. Mm. To all who received him, if you have truly received him, I hope and pray that you learn and discern how to receive other brothers and sisters in Christ who have also received him how to receive them not according to the flesh but according to the power of the holy spirit of god this is brother rob wilson like subscribe comment share if you care this gospel is sufficient to reconcile god and man and it is sufficient to work every power of reconciliation that is necessary on earth and don't let any principality or power or scheme of the devil convince you otherwise. Peace and love in Jesus' name. Amen.